Hello boys and girls, my name is Dr Katie and I'm here today to tell you a story. Now, this story stars our VIB, which stands for Very Important Bear. This is Mr Ted. Mr Ted recently had a little stay in hospital with us, so that's what the story is all about. Mr Ted's trip to hospital. Before we begin, I'd like you just to have a little think about if you've ever been to a hospital before. Some of you probably haven't, just like Mr Ted here, and some of you might have been a couple of times or quite a few times. Maybe all you know about a hospital is what you've seen in the news with the Covid pandemic. Before we begin, I would like to set you two challenges. The first challenge is to think of three words or feelings that you think of when you think of the word hospital. If I was to think of them, I would say my three words would be kindness, caring and busy. Maybe you could write down the three words or get a grown up to help you write them down. The second challenge is for you to think of three people who work in the hospital and what their job actually is. So for example, I'm a doctor at the hospital, but what does a doctor actually do? So I want you to think of three people that work at the hospital and what their job is. Wonder how many of them will choose doctor now. <laughs> Maybe you or your grown up can help you write them down and then we'll come back to them at the end of the story. Okay, now you've got your challenges out of the way, let's get started. This is our story today. It's called Mr. Ted's Trip to Hospital. Can you see through the picture there, Mr. Ted? Oh. Once upon a time, there was a dear old bear called Mr. Ted. He belonged to a girl called Catherine. Oh, how Mr. Ted loved Catherine. And oh, how Catherine loved Mr. Ted. They shared everything together. They would laugh and play, go for walks and snuggle down all cosy at night too. Sometimes they would even share a secret midnight snack. When Catherine was at school, Mr. Ted would sit and wait with all her other toys for her to come home. The day seemed to go on forever. Mr. Ted's favorite days of the week were Saturday and Sunday. Those were the days he got Catherine to himself all day long. One weekend, Mr. Ted woke up with Catherine squealing in delight. While they had been sleeping, a big blanket of snow had come down and covered everything as far as their eyes could see. You know what this means? exclaimed Catherine excitedly. Snowman and sledging day! So, Mr. Ted and Catherine got all wrapped up in their hats, jackets, scarves and gloves and went outside for their snow day together. They each made a snowman and had a quick snowball fight before digging the sledge out and heading for the local park where there was the perfect sledging hill. They climbed all the way to the top of the hill. There were a few other boys and girls there too, but none of them had brought their teddies with them. Mr. Ted felt very important. Mr. Ted and Catherine clambered into the sledge together. Catherine said, I will count to three, Mr. Ted. Now, Mr. Ted didn't believe her as Catherine liked to play little pranks. She said, one, two, and they were off. Mr. Ted giggled to himself. He knew Catherine wouldn't get to three. They sped down the hill over and over, seeming to go faster and faster on each trip. It was so much fun. And both Mr. Ted and Catherine felt like they were flying. They must have gone down the hill over 20 times. On their last trip down, another group of children joined them and they all set off at the same time. Whoosh! Catherine and Mr. Ted were away like a light, speeding down the hill away from the other children. Mr. Ted heard a shout next to him and when he looked around, another sledger was right behind them and seemed to be losing control of the sledge. They were rocking from side to side and shouting very loudly. Mr. Ted blinked and crash, the other sledger had hit into them and this time Mr. Ted really did feel like he was flying. 
He tumbled out of his sledge and rolled down the hill, only stopping when he banged into a tree at the bottom. Oh, poor Mr. Ted. Catherine had been lucky enough to stay on her sledge and she made her way over to him. Oh, Mr. Ted, she said, that was quite a tumble. Are you okay? Mr. Ted sat up and said, I think so, ow. As he tried to stand up, he realized his leg was sore. He tried to move it again. Ow, oh, Catherine, that really hurts, he said, pointing at his leg. Catherine tried to help Mr. Ted get up, but it was no use. The pain in his leg was now worse than ever, and every time he tried to move it, it was getting worse. Mr. Ted, said Catherine, we need to get you checked over. We should take you to the hospital in case you've broken your leg. So Catherine called the ambulance, who agreed. Mr. Ted should get checked over in the hospital. I'm scared of the hospital, Catherine, he said. Oh, don't be scared, Mr. Ted, Catherine replied. Everyone at the hospital will look after you. As he said this, the paramedic arrived and they agreed saying, oh yes, everyone at the hospital is kind, caring and gentle. They will all take such good care of you. The doctors, the nurses and everyone else. Mr. Ted got helped into the ambulance on a stretcher and as the paramedic drove him to the hospital, Mr. Ted started thinking about all the everybody else that he was going to meet. He had never been to hospital before, so didn't really know what to expect. He knew that doctors worked there and that nurses worked there too, but he really wasn't sure who this everybody else was that the paramedics had spoken about. Mr. Ted arrived at the hospital and he met lots of lovely people and... What was that, Mr. Ted? You want to tell the boys and girls yourself who you met and, and how they looked after you? No? You want to show them? Okay then, here we go. First, Mr. Ted was looked after by the paramedics who work in the ambulance. They made sure his leg was supported and that he was comfortable before they took him to accident and emergency. They gave him some painkillers and said how well he was doing. Can you see how they are keeping him safe by wearing masks and looking after him by checking his heart rate and blood pressure? Can you see the colourful leads that help the paramedics to do this? So, Mr. Ted, we're going to put this wee thing on your leg to support it until we get up to the hospital. So Elaine's going to lift your leg and I'll slide it up for you. Well done. That's as you're doing good. And these wee straps hold this nice and tight and this will keep your leg nice and safe until you get up to the hospital for an x-ray. You're doing really well. When Mr Ted arrived at the hospital, the paramedics wished him well and the nurse welcomed him to the department. They made him comfortable in a hospital gown and did another full check of him to make sure his heart rate and blood pressure were still normal. Hello, Mr. Ted. My name's Aidan. I'm one of the nurses. I hear you've had an accident. Oh dear, that leg looks very sore. What we'll do, we'll get you into a hospital gown. Is that okay? Perfect, let's do that. Here we go. You've been a silly bear. That's better. Dr. Chen, do you want to come and see Mr. Ted? The doctor then came to see Mr. Ted. She made him feel special and magical. She checked him over and started to think of a plan to make Mr. Ted feel better. Ted, I'm Dr. Chen. I heard you've had an accident. Well, let's see if I can get you better, but I want to check something. Do you have magical powers? Every time my friend goes near someone with magic, it lights up. Let's see. Oh my gosh, you have magic. That's fantastic. Now, you've helped me, can I help you? Let's have a look at this leg. Oh dear, that looks very sore. Let's see if we can make that better for you, okay? The doctor then came back to tell Mr. Ted the plan. First, some quick blood tests, a splint to help support his leg, and an x-ray to make sure there were no broken bones. Right, Mr. Ted. I'm going to get some bloods from this arm 
and my colleague Aidan is going to come and put a splint on this leg and that's going to help you with the pain. And then we'll get an x-ray. Hello again Mr Tent. Let's pop this splint on and get you feeling better. Okay. Lovely. Is that better, Mr. Ted? Brilliant. We'll get you that x-ray soon. This is how we take bloods in the hospital. Isn't it quick and easy? Mr. Ted didn't even notice it being done. Right, so I'm going to take some bloods from this arm and I'm going to leave this little blue button so we can give you some medication. There we go. And that's us done. Well done. The doctor and nurse worked together to make sure that that little blue button didn't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to stick these down. Well done, Mr. Ted. You've been very brave. And there's little teddies on it. Well done, that's us all finished. Now let's get some pictures of your leg. Mr. Ted then went for his x-ray where he met the radiographer. She made him very comfortable on the x-ray bench. She spoke to him, made him feel welcome and explained what to do as she took his x-ray. Hello Mr. Ted, we heard you'd hurt your leg, so we're going to do a quick x-ray to make sure you haven't broken anything. So I'm just going to shine the camera on you, Mr. Ted. There we go. And we're going to do just a quick x-ray of your leg. This doesn't hurt, it's just like a photograph. An x-ray is a special photograph of your bones. We use it to check if any bones are broken. Nice and still, Mr. Ted. One more picture. The x-ray then pops up on the computer screen. Can you see if Mr. Ted has broken his leg? Now it was time for the doctor to look at the x-ray and make another plan, depending on if there was a broken bone or not. The tent. It looks all nice and normal, which is good. So it looks like it's just a really bad sprain. What we'll do is we'll get you up on the board, we'll put a bandage on it, and if you're managing later on, hopefully we can get you home. Does that sound okay? Brilliant. The porter came to collect Mr. Ted and move him up to the ward. Porters help move things from one part of the hospital to another, such as blood tests, patients, and their luggage. He put Mr. Ted in a wheelchair and off they went. On the way to the ward, the porter needed to drop Mr. Ted's blood samples into the lab for processing. Mr. Ted wondered aloud what they would do with the bloods and the lab technician heard him. So they said they would show him what happened in the lab. Yeah, Mr. Ted, this is reception in the laboratory. They're going to take, hmm? Yes, they're very nice people, aren't they? Yes, they're going to take your sample now. That's it, wait bye bye to your sample. Okay. After handing the blood samples into reception, they get put into a big machine that whirls and twirls the blood sample to process it. Can you see Mr. Ted watching? Once the machine has finished all of its thunking and clunking, the blood test results pop up on a computer screen. Can you see Mr. Ted waiting for his? They were normal. Because Mr. Ted was so interested, the lab technician showed him other things they used in the lab, like a microscope. A microscope is like a really powerful pair of binoculars. Mr. 
Mr Ted was then taken up to the ward by the porter. Whilst he was there, another nurse came in who bandaged his leg up. Hi, Mr Ted, are you one of the nurses? Are you okay if I bandage up your leg? Oh, yeah. Shave. Now that Mr Ted's leg was all bandaged, he was moved into his own room. On the way there, the nurse asked if he was still sore. Yes, said Mr Ted. OK, I will sort you some painkillers, Mr Ted. And the nurse went to ask the doctor for a prescription of painkillers. Once he was in his new room, Mr Ted met somebody else who works in the hospital. A domestic. She bustled around his room cleaning everything in sight. Mr. Ted asked the domestic if she was very busy. Oh yes, I've been very busy, she replied. Now more than ever, these rooms have to be very clean to keep lots of germs away. Oh yes, said Mr. Ted, that's why we're all wearing masks now, isn't it? That's exactly right, replied the domestic. Masks and keeping clean are as important as each other. Now don't forget to wash your hands. The nurse popped back in to check on Mr. Ted, who told him that his leg was feeling much better but that it was still sore when he tried to walk on it. The nurse said he would call the physiotherapist to come and see Mr Ted. They are very good at helping you get walking again. The physiotherapist was delighted to see if they could help Mr Ted and suggested bringing him up to their gym to make use of the equipment there. So the porter was called and took Mr Ted to the gym. Hi Mr Ted, my name's Lauren. I'm one of the physiotherapists. I'm just in to see how you're getting on, see how that wee leg's feeling, and hopefully go for a wee walk if you're feeling up to it. Is that all right? Fantastic. Can you wiggle your toes for me? Good man. Can you bend that wee leg? Oh, it's all stiff and a wee bit sore. There we go. Will we try and get you up on your feet? So we'll get you to shimmy to the edge of the bed, and then Oh, it's a wee bit stiff. That's us. We'll go for a wee walk. I'll give you a wee hand. Super. That was really, really good. Well done. That was excellent, Mr Ted. So we're going to go and we're going to practice a wee bit on the stairs just to make sure you're nice and safe in them and then hopefully we're all good to go home. Is that all right, Mr Ted? Will we give that a go? All right, Mr Ted, when we're climbing the stairs, we want to be really careful and make sure that you're not going to hurt that sore leg. So when we're climbing, we're going to step up with our good leg first and then bring our sore leg up to meet it. That's good. We're going to move forward. Good leg, sore leg. Good leg, sore leg. And last step. Oh, well done, Mr. Ted. Mr. Okay. Ted, it's the opposite when we're coming back down the stairs. So you're going to put that wee sore leg down first. Then your good one. Well done. Your sore leg. And then your good one. Sore leg. Good one. Oh, you're great at this. Last step. Are you ready? Sore leg and good leg. Well done, Mr. Ted. Mr. Ted felt much better after being helped by the physiotherapist and he thanked her as he left the gym. No problem, Mr. Ted, she replied. I want you to try walking on your own and then you should be able to get away home. As she said this, Mr. Ted's tummy did a big grumble. The physiotherapist laughed and said, well, Mr. Ted, you sound very hungry. So why don't you try a walk to the canteen and get something to eat? Mr. Ted walked downstairs, taking in all the colourful walls on his way to the canteen. At the canteen, he met a lovely lady who gave him a baked potato. Hi, Mr. Ted. What can I get you today for your dinner? Oh, having baked potato. Do you like some beans, Wanda? Okay. 
The baked potato was perfect. Crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. My compliments to the chef, Mr Ted called as he left the canteen. Thank you, the chef replied from the kitchen. Back on the ward and feeling much better, Mr Ted got the all clear for home. All he needed to do now was collect the painkillers from the pharmacy and he would soon be on his way back to Catherine. Then he made his way to the exit and he turned around and said thank you, all of you, for looking after me, for being kind and caring. I feel so much better. I didn't realise so many people worked in the hospital and I'm so grateful to you all for taking such good care of me. The staff all smiled at him and replied, you're welcome Mr Ted, thank you for being lovely and being a lovely patient. Hopefully you don't feel as worried if you have to come to hospital again. And maybe next time you can meet lots more of the other lovely people who work in the NHS. Take care, Mr Ted, and be careful in that sledge now. Mr Ted giggled as he made his way back to Kath. The end. So there you go, boys and girls. That was Mr Ted's adventure in hospital. Mr Ted, that was quite an adventure, wasn't it? I wonder if the boys and girls have learned anything about your time in hospital. Should I ask them their challenges again? Okay. So boys and girls, back to our first two challenges from before the story started. I wonder if you can write down three words or feelings that you now think of when you think of hospital. I wonder if any of them have changed. I would also like you to write down three different jobs of three different people who work in the hospital, but they've got to be different from the first people that you wrote down. So if you put doctor the first time, you can't put doctor the second time. Thank you for listening boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about Mr Ted's adventure in hospital and hearing about all the wonderful people that he met along the way. Take care. Bye. I've got here another list of questions that I or challenges that we could set you guys um, so can you think of any other reasons why teddy bears or why people need to go into hospital how do you think people feel before going into hospital and how do you think they feel after leaving hospital do you think Mr Ted felt looked after in the hospital and how many people made him feel looked after if you did think he was looked after well if you could choose a job in the hospital, what would it be and why? I would love to know the answers to this. So can you draw me a picture of the job that you liked the best and tell me what you enjoyed the most about?